Hey everybody, I'm Jimmy Owens and welcome to another episode of Behind the Unicorn. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell your friends, tell your friends' friends uh, to, come, to come check out the channel. So uh, appreci appreciate your support. We have- All the people. All the people. All the people. Tell your people people. Yeah. Um, it's the only way it works. Yeah, you yeah. gotta let all the people know. Um, let's tell them your name. Michael Hyden. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Appreciate it. thanks for having me here. Yes, sir. Yeah. I got some questions for you uh, out of the gate. <laughs> I love throwing the cards. Yeah, I do too. It's yeah. better when Ryan like gets to go with a little cat sound and oh, the nice. breaking glass. Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to jump right into it. Have you ever had a Sasquatch experience? Um, I haven't, but I am looking for one. You I'm are. in desperate search of one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you spend a lot of my time outdoors. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I haven't even been to the Sasquatch festival but you're going. But the plan you, is to go. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. you could probably increase sales. Exactly. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, Views. Of course. All that yeah. kind of stuff. Views, sales. Yeah. Um, do you know of anyone that has had a, like anyone personally that you know has had a Sasquatch experience? Not that I would trust to say they really had one. You okay. know, I mean. Liquor you know, was involved. Heavily. <laughs> heavily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They tend to look like trees. It, you know, or, or, you know, girlfriends or something like that sometimes, yeah, depending on the girlfriend. If your girlfriend looks course. like Sasquatch. Yeah, then you got problems. Call somebody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you believe in Sasquatch? Uh, here's the deal. I believe that it's possible that they at least used to be here. Yep. You know, there's a whole science on giant people. I don't know if you're aware of this, but they've found like things about giant people people that lived among us regular normal sized people. So to say that there wasn't a hairy giant person walking around. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I think it could happen. Yeah. You could only imagine how much I had to shave off this morning. Really? <laughs> Not really. Nice. I've never grown a beard. <laughs> Have, so you've never seen one. Did you ever think you've seen one? Um, no, not really. I mean, there's been weird noises, but usually the weird noises are like a bobcat or a mountain lion because they make gosh awful yeah. sounds. In what is your nature. favorite like nature uh, animal? Oh, uh, let's see. I usually say prairie dog. Okay. Because whenever I was like two, I jumped the, the little fence at the zoo yeah, when and all went running there. after them. Mm -hmm. um, but really my favorite wild animal out there would be a river otter. Okay. I think they're amazing. You know, yeah. they can fight off together. They fight off crocodiles. They do all kinds of craziness and they hold hands when they float in the water. So nice. they don't, when they sleep, okay. so they don't lose each other. My, uh, mine is hyena. Hyena. Really? Yeah. That's an odd one. Yeah. You've never seen the Lion King then? No. Well, yeah, I have. But <laughs> and you pick them. They eat every part of an animal. They, they eat do. the bones. There's nothing left with a hyena. Okay. They're just this. I don't know. I think I'm just what they eat. Just really says a lot about yourself. Yeah, I wanted to just eat everything. <laughs> <up. laughs> so, um, my experience with Sasquatch. Oh, good. Yes. Right. So I was running a, a route in in the city. And I was running by these, I ran it every morning, okay. right? And I was running, I was running, getting to the end of it. There's this patch of trees that, you know, they haven't knocked down yet, like a big patch, big square of trees. I all of a sudden see this huge shadow on this tree hmm. and like this big, huge figure, right? And it was a car driving by and it threw my shadow on the tree and I stopped and I was like, this is sass. I was like, oh, I let up with this huge roar. And like, I, uh, I found my inner like caveman roar. It was nasty. It was vicious. So you found Sasquatch and debunked it yourself yeah. all at the same time. Yeah. Okay. No, but I seriously was very scared. And I think that's my closest experience to finding him. You know, the whole idea, <laughs> it, it stinks that there's so many fake videos out there. Yeah. Because I mean, somebody that actually finds him is going to win. A ton of money. I say win is going to get a ton of money. <laughs> I don't so know if there's an actual it. competition, <laughs> but it seems like it with all the shows and different things. So, all right, before we get any farther, we're okay. going to uh, talk about our episode sponsor. Um, we Design Tunnels actually sponsoring this episode. Imagine that. It's nice. So, um, if you guys are looking for um, help with your podcast, 
YouTube channel, uh, animation graphics, video templates. Check out this commercial. So you never know what happens during those commercial breaks. <laughs> I know it could be all kinds of craziness. Yeah. There was a lot of stuff going on uh -huh. here. All right. Let's get into this. Okay. What makes you a unicorn? Uh, you know, I thought about this. I knew this question was going to come up. He did. And, you know, as far as like photography, because I'm a photographer as well, I've been photographing since it was film. So as well. So you're Sasquatch and photographer. Sasquatch and photographer. But photographer, like a photographer and what else? Uh, uh, podcaster, All right, gotcha. YouTuber. Okay. I just that wanted to thing. let these guys know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we'll get into that in a second. Yeah, but like on the photography side, I've been doing this since it was film. Okay. You know, so where yeah. you'd go photograph a wedding and yep. you wouldn't know if you had images for like two weeks. And my dad's a photographer, so I'm second generation uh, art background. And I think part of it is just that I'm just an easygoing, happy guy. And it's hard to find these days with a lot of people that I talk to. Mm -hmm. Some people are just kind of get uptight and I think I'm easy going too, but my you wife doesn't super, think so. Well, tell her I am. Okay. I'll, he is. If you're watching, he is. So <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Um, and, and in the overlanding side, which is the other thing, the thing I do the podcast yep. and stuff for, I live in Oklahoma and I do this overlanding thing, which is not really an Oklahoma thing. I looked up the word. Okay. What def definition did you find? Uh, mostly it's going out on a road and I mean, I'm going to put it in my terms. Do it. Primitive um, road traveling. I mean, you can sleep in your car basically if you want to or like, you know, like tent, tent travel, like very primitive basically. Yeah, I like it. And it's primitive like, um, um, I'm a lot of loss for words. So what it comes down to, it's self-reliant. Yep traveling by vehicle travel that's what i'm looking for and right. where the destination's not the only goal so um it, it's not just getting to point b it's what happens from point a to point b that the overland community loves because it's all about getting that truck out in the ruts and you know seeing the things that you pass stopping and taking photographs or doing whatever it is that you like to do when you go and explore drinking water out of a stream because we ran out yeah yeah pretty much Right. Yeah. Make sure you bring water. Yeah. And gas. Yeah. And gas. Yeah. Those are important. <laughs> important. You go uh, places where there's not a lot of cell phone service. Yeah. I mean, the whole idea is to go as remote as possible. You mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of discussion in the community about what overlanding actually is. Um, I tend to believe that overlanding is just going out and exploring. Um, a lot of people say it's to be disconnected and get away from, um, internet, phone, people, stuff like that, which I kind of believe it's to go into those little communities also mm -hmm. and see what the culture's like. Like even in the United States, which to me is the best place to overland. And it sounds funny because most people think that that's international travel, mm -hmm. um, but we're so huge and the borders are easy. We can just drive across the straight state line. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And most of the magnific magnificent things to see in the world are here. Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, you know, there's just a ton of different places to go. Have you been to Yellowstone? I haven't yet. Okay. It's on I the list. Go. Yeah, we'll yeah. go together. And, and a lot of it is, is like when you do it in other countries, it's to go and, and see the little cultures. Well, the Northeast part of the United States, the, the way they eat, like what they eat is different than the South. Sure. So the cultures are there here in the United States. We're just all one people. What's your favorite camping food then? Oh, favorite camping food? Well, definitely steak. I mean, I really? eat usually better camping really? than I do at home. So steak with mushrooms, a little bit of gravy. Yeah, it's good stuff. Okay, you got a whole kitchen out there. Yes. So <laughs> it all started with backpacking for me, mountain biking and backpacking. When I think of primitive, I don't think of steak and mushrooms and well, gravy. Well, yeah, true. 
That's a good point. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've got, you know, fridges that we bring and all kinds of power sources and okay. stuff to uh, to generate the power to keep the fridge going. Um, but like backpacking is more primitive, but we get older and we just want to get more comfortable. So mm-hmm. then I've got a rooftop tent on my truck. So it pops up and there's a mattress in there and yeah. the bedding's always in there. And so it's a little... It's a good backup it's a little bougie. you get kicked out of the house. Yeah, it's a little right. bougie. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's cool. So uh, hit me again. What makes you a unicorn? Uh, I'm doing something in Oklahoma that yeah. most people wouldn't do. Yeah, I hadn't heard of it. Yeah. So here we are. Yeah. You're on the show. We're doing the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you also do a lot of other stuff, uh, which we'll get into. What business, before we get into the other stuff, I wanted to go ahead and ask you, like, do you have any business hacks for our audience? Business hacks, yeah. uh, consistency. Yeah, you know, especially if you're going to try to do the podcast or the YouTube thing, um, consistency is the key. I mean, it can be low quality on on video or even sound. I would say your sound needs to be better than your video quality because mm-hmm. um, if you can't hear it, no one's going to want to pay attention to it, especially on a podcast. Right, <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but being consistent because if you're not consistent and there's not a volume of work for them to go back and binge on, mm-hmm. then people have a hard time coming back and you might not stay in the algorithm for whatever platform it is. Yeah. What about uh, life hacks? Life hacks, um, find something that makes you happy and do it. Yeah. So it's I mean, that easy. you're doing a podcast about your life hack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You like to camp, you like to travel, you like to go hike the trails. Mm-hmm. You like to go be eat, outside, eat steak in the mountain. Yeah. Right. Poop, poop and pee in the woods. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Those are the things. Yeah. That's probably the most primitive part of where you go. Right. I have, I have a picture of my favorite place I've ever pooped. I was worried about what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the enchanted Rockies trail in New Mexico in Carson national forest. Uh-huh. And we were 12,000 feet up. And I was at a, a kind of a little peninsula on the mountain that yeah. overlooked five different mountain tops, mountain ranges, mm-hmm. mountain tops, and uh, set up my little poop chair right there. And you have a chair, yeah, a okay. little a little poop stool. You don't stool. have like the one that hooks onto the your truck that you no the, the tailgate one or the hitch. The, the, hitch. the hitch. Yeah, no, not that one. <laughs> no, I want to get away. I don't want my camp to be near where I poop. So right, yeah. Then yeah. you have to drive your truck away. What are we doing? We're talking about poop. We I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. Okay, yeah. every it's it's a topic that gets brought up more than you think. When I, people get started, yeah, especially women, they're like, uh, "How do I go to the bathroom?" You yeah. go. Yeah. You just go. Yeah. You just do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Leave a comment below. The craziest places you've used the restroom. Oh, that could get bad real quick. Yeah, that could. I cannot wait to see them. <laughs> I, can't. I can't wait to read them. Yeah, I think I that's going to be either. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna go So where's the, where's the craziest place that you've gone to the bathroom? My pants. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't really know. I've, I've actually never gone in the woods except pee. Not even on a mountain bike trip? No. Really? Not my whole life. Huh. You're missing out. <laughs> yeah. The freedom you experience is unbelievable. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> just you and the wind, buddy. You and the wind. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, I will go to a place before, so I can go put a comment. Okay. On there. Yeah. yeah. I will. I'll go practice. <laughs> <laughs> it probably it does take practice though, right? Just don't pee in the wind. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah I got yeah, you. Common right. sense. Anyways, um, tell us a little bit more about your podcast. So it's called All Over Overland, and all over, all over, one word, all over, one word. And then Overland. Overland, not Rover with an R, but nope. Over with Overland. An R. So and it's Overland it's travel is the term. Yes, that, travel over yeah. the land. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, this is the easiest way to. Do remember. you think there is a um, Waterland? Um, you know that gets fu- that's funny that gets brought up. So what Does do you it? do if you get over the water? You're boating or sailing, right? But is there like a term for Waterland? Like we only go out and go in the water and. I'm sure there is. Yeah. I think it's sailing. They made a movie. Yeah, it's called sailing. <laughs> it's called the ocean. It's called the ocean. It's called ocean. It's called, oceanine. It's called the cruise. Oceanine. Call it cruise. Yeah. Um, how long has your podcast been around? Because I'm intrigued by this. Podcast has been around for about two and a half years, and then we, me and a buddy of mine named Lee, who well, lives. So that would be since 2020. 
Yes. Roughly. Right. The only reason at, I say that because yeah. when you see this, you don't know how long it's been since we've talked about it. Exactly. So since 2020. We're dating it now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, since about 2020, right before the pandemic, yeah. okay. you know, started like right before, I think. Perfect timing. And, uh, so 19 maybe. Okay. Um, so, and then did that for a while and started interviewing people, which is like this, like this, you know, people that were either influencers or business owners in the, uh, lifestyle. And a buddy of mine approached me and said, Hey, why don't we do this live and do video to it? Mm-hmm and uh, have people in the comments that can chat live and ask questions. And I put him off for about six months. And then we started the All Over Overland show on Overland Radio, which is another Facebook page that mm-hmm. people can go and, and actually watch live. We go live Tuesdays, uh, 8 p.m. Every Tuesday we go live. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. Awesome. And then uh, even on, on uh, Spotify, you can upload videos to Spotify now. So your yeah. recorded sessions are on Spotify too. Yep. Yep. Because I watch them. Yeah. So there's still on Spotify, we we switch it all over Overland is really kind of usually my personal um, experience or thoughts on Overlanding. And then Overland Radio podcast is where we have most of the interviews. Okay. I throw a few of the good ones over on the all over Overland page. So Okay. Yeah. Um, how was it starting out? It was uh, it was fun. We were considered the Howard Stern of Overlanding. Okay. We cussed, we drank, we yeah. did all kinds you of still craziness. still drink on there. Yeah, oh yeah, we have mandatory whiskey shots. Yeah. Old Fire Whiskey out of Oklahoma is my favorite, by the way. Okay. Um, old Fire. Oil Fire. Oh, Oil Fire. Oof. Yeah, there's a I big story I about it. very well. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, we do that, and really we do that just to loosen the guests up. Um, mm-hmm. It seems to work, because most of the people that come on don't have any experience with this. Right and they're nervous as nervous can be. And we don't ask, we don't send a list of questions to ask. It's a campfire conversation, right? you know, where exactly it just, we, we go do down the, rabbit holes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes it more fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, so if someone in our audience is wanting to start a YouTube channel or a podcast, what's some advice you could give them? Uh, again, it's the consistency part really? would be the first thing. And then second is just get out of your own way. You know, just act like the cameras aren't there. Ask yeah. the questions. Be stupid. Don't yeah. don't don't worry about asking a dumb question. Yeah. Don't worry about um, getting stuck on something. Just and, and take the chance to. If somebody says, um, you know, me and my dad. There was a guy I interviewed once. And he said him and his dad did treasure hunting. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute we're going to talk about treasure hunting because that doesn't get brought up Mm -hmm. in the Overland show, you know, that often. So found out that he actually, him and his dad were on a discovery show. Which one? I I watch a lot of those. I can't remember what it's called, but it was some kind of treasure in Arizona that they were trying to find. (laughs) Just joking. Maybe. Was it lost? (laughs) Yeah, maybe. Uh, Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember which one it was, but uh, we got into this whole thing about yeah. How him and his dad, that's how he got started overlanding. Everybody usually has a story about how they got started. So I think if you're going to get into interviewing people, um, find the back, find out what the backstory is. Yeah. You know, like find out why did you even think this was something you wanted to do? Right. Why did you think podcasts was something you wanted to do? Uh, I talk. A oh, really? Lot. Okay. A lot. All right. Yeah. Well, I did notice uh, in one of your videos on Spotify, you have a mountain bike next to your couch in the background. Oh yeah. Uh huh. So you, I mean, I'm sure you know like a lot of good trails. Uh, and you know, there's no? not many in Oklahoma really, but okay. if you really want to no, go. I mean, I like to mountain bike and I'm not like super advanced, but I'm not like, I want to go, you know, I know. We need I to like, go to Bentonville, I know, Arkansas. I know I like it. Okay. Bentonville, Arkansas is All like right, the new mecca. Wife. Hold on. Yeah, let's just load it up and go. <laughs> Tell her right now. Hold yeah. on, give me the phone. Yeah, I've even got like the camping stuff all We're in ready. the truck. We're ready. We got steak? Yeah, well, we'll pick that up on the way. <laughs> Shoot a deer on the way? Can you do oh, that? Oh, even better. Yeah. yeah. It's in season, I think, right now. Yeah, or hit one with the vehicle. I just did that a couple of weeks ago. Did you really? Yeah, I did. It's a bummer. Yeah. Um, it lived. Oh. It was fine. Yeah. It was hmm. just like, hey, here's a dent in your car, and I'll see you next time. So, um, anything else about podcast or recording or anything that you think the audience should know? Uh, get a good mic. 
Get a good mic. Get All a good right. mic. Uh, I recommend headphones. Um, just so that, especially if you're interviewing somebody like through like a Zoom or mm-hmm. StreamYard or something like that, yeah. you don't have the Nasty. double. Yeah. You know, like you hear them talking and then because it's through your mic. So get a good microphone. That would be my recommendation. How do you, I have to go into this because this relates to us and I wasn't meaning to go down the rabbit hole, but I'm going to. Rabbit it. Yeah. Yes. Um, How do you feel like your brand plays into the podcast? Uh, I think it's everything. I I think brand right now, you know, we live in a, in a world where brand is one of the most important things that you can build um, Mm -hmm. because it, it's a visual or it's a repetitive kind of thing that's out there color or it's the heartbeat it's the heartbeat it's the heartbeat so if you build your brand then people know your brand and you might even have sponsors reach out to you and want to be tagged with that brand yeah let's go and i'm glad you brought that up you guys have sponsors we do right um tell us all the places your podcast is on because i think you named two okay so facebook live facebook live and youtube live is okay. where we go live. Okay. And then after we're done, everything's recorded, of course, mm-hmm. and they stay in those places. YouTube's usually the easiest to go find older episodes, yep. but then we're we're put on all of the uh, podcasting Spotify, platforms. Pod, Apple Podcasts. Yeah, all of them. Like yeah. there's 20 Amazon Music, plus, whatever, all of I think those, that yeah. we're on. Where's your biggest following? Do the, you know? Where is it? Mm-hmm. Facebook. We reach really? over okay. 20,000 people a month on Facebook alone. Good job. Yeah, right? that's pretty awesome. So just kind of got traction yeah, because of the the topic and the, the industry that you're covering. Yeah, and a lot of the influencers that we have, we just say, hey, share this on your page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right. we can pull from their yeah. followers. Sure. Um, oh, man, there was something else I was going to ask you about that. You hear that? <laughs> it's nothing. I was just trying to buy time. Gotcha. Um, we might have the cut, Ryan. I'm trying to, what was the other question? It was, oh yeah, I got it. Ready? Okay. I'm ready, Ryan. You ready? All right. Here we go. That's a good one. Um, the the camera. Yeah. It's, and the cat. Is that the goal every time? And the cat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Like this, if you open your eye, (laughs) right at your eyeballs. Um, how did you get, did you go about getting sponsors? Uh, well, we didn't even think about getting sponsors in the beginning. We just rolled with it. And there's a few sponsors that we've reached out to, but most of them have reached out to us, um, at some point, um, saying, Hey, we like what we're, what you're doing. Yep. And then, you know, we follow that up with, well, if you really like what we're doing, Mm -hmm. then how about you help us out? Um, sure. Midland. Who's going to reach out to us? Who's going to reach out to you? Is it little Debbie Ryan? Little Debbie. Little Debbie's. Little Debbie. They got some unicorn cake treats they're great we have a oh, stack yeah. of them over there we eat them all the time there you go yeah yeah so and then like oil fire whiskey yep. you know we we have not a huge partnership with them um but we're not getting anything for free from them or paid but we do talk to them so yeah. that's step one you know sure once a brand or a uh, company recognizes you and and sends out something just stay in communication yeah. with them and usually things fall into place midland yeah. radio is a great example we had Midland Radio on um, as a guest, and then they sent us some radios, and uh, we saw them at a convention that we go to, an expo, nice. and uh, and they came by and were talking to us, and we're like, hey, look, if you if you get anything out of this, mm-hmm. then let's talk, and we talked, and they signed up for a year long sponsorship for the Congratulations. for the show. So yeah, yeah, good it's deal. Awesome. Yeah, I just think it's good for our audience to hear. Right. Yeah. I mean, mean, a lot of people wonder how that happens. You know, you just email people or call people. They want to know how you poop in the woods. They want to know how you get the important things. Yeah. The important stuff. Um, So I I think the biggest way to get true sponsorship is just to, you know, like for us, we use a lot of the equipment that we've already purchased. Yeah. And we love the equipment and it shows when we talk about it. Mm-hmm. And just in our Instagram, because we do Instagram and yep. all the things, TikTok, all the things. And that engagement they see, and usually they reach out to us. Right. Um, yeah. And offer something, either you a product or. You become an influencer, or, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. And it's not um, easy to do. It takes a lot of time, it, it's, right? You got to think about it. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. 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 Um, a question just in from our audience in the comments. Nice. <laughs> what keeps you up at night? 
what keeps me up at night? Yeah. Gas prices. Really? Oh, geez. Right now. Because you're traveling. And you're, yes. How many, yeah. What's your uh, miles per gallon you get? Uh, I get about. I'm going to guess. 13. 11 to 13. Ah, all right. Yeah. yeah. Depends on if that four wheel drive's engaged or not. Yeah. So if four wheel drive's engaged, then it goes down quite a bit. So uh, yeah, 11 to, 11 to 13 is kind of where I, I play. I get about 240 to 260 miles per tank. Okay. Do you have a snorkel on your vehicle? No. Uh, you don't want a snorkel? Sn- snorkels are, they're a funny yeah. thing. They're better for the dust okay, reduction. Versus water. Versus water. All right. You know, they're great for water. I mean, I'm yeah. not going to say they're That's not. they're for, right? <laughs> yeah, and they look cool. Like <laughs> every look overlander cool. is supposed to have a snorkel, a rooftop tent, and a set of max tracks. Really? If you have those three things, then you're an official overlander. Okay. Yeah. Not a Volkswagen bug traveling That's, out into the woods. There's a really cool one. Really? It's tan. It's got all the stuff on it. It has those three. It has those three <laughs> things. Yeah. Gas you can have on the back. Something to, like, yeah. Some good tie-ons to get pulled out of the mud. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, gas prices. That's it? You know, I, things don't really bother me that much. No, I mean, don't. gas prices and finding the next place to go camp. Yeah. You know, those are the, the big things, I guess. Awesome. That's good. So, yeah. Why do you do what you do? Uh, adventure. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying so, this is going to be shocking for you, but I'm not somebody that's still very good. And, uh, You're doing great. I've never been, <laughs> I've never been good at a job where I had to sit in an office. Yeah. You know, a problem uh, solver. Yeah. I, I just want to be out and <laughs> you're explore. a problem causer. I'm problem a causer. problem causer. Yeah. yeah. Can't and, so. and plus my love for photography and art, you know, I just want to go and see things, go get that creative and yeah. I don't want to see the same thing every day. So I want to go travel and see things. So how many, um, nature photos do you have? I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. You, so you do take nature shots. Oh yeah. You ever do time lapse of the stars? I haven't done spinning. much of that yet. That'd be cool. No, I've always wanted yeah. to do that. I mean, like there's a really great, there are already great stuff out there of that. Like people have just perfected it mm-hmm. and I've always wanted to do it. So I'd be like, oh, wow, you probably, you know, you're going to gain some type of experience from doing that time. Yeah. Lapse. Yeah. yeah, yeah you, I mean, get, you get it. Yeah. Open that shutter up and let it just go for several one, seconds. One of my favorite types of All photography night. Um, is like a structure photography of like, let's say an old vehicle in a field, pitch dark. Have you ever seen where people paint with flashlights? Oh yeah. 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 That's, those look pretty cool. So for our audience, it's dark. You can't barely see anything out there. There's no lights. There's no, you can walk lights. around and uh-huh. it, it just captures what the light hits. Yeah. And so you leave your shutter speed, your shutter open, and then you, you go over the object with the flashlight. I mean, I don't even know how long the exposure is, but it has to be long enough that you can paint it. And then, mm-hmm. so you paint it and it exposes the only the device around it makes it look like it's all glowing. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Those before cool. I got into the overlanding and traveling stuff, um, photography has kind of been my key thing. Uh, my dad's a photographer. I've been yeah. a professional since I was 19, 20 years old. And uh, there was a class that I went to that talked about painting. They had a motorcycle out there and it was pitch black and you could see the city skyline. That was it. And he went around and painted it with the painted light, it with yeah. a flashlight. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. I've done a little bit of that in here was just turn off all the lights and mess around. You make some, it's fun. Anyways, get in the dark, get a camera. Yeah. Just go play. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Um, we should at least tell people um, listening what a snorkel is. So a snorkel goes into your air box of your vehicle mm-hmm. And it helps clean the air, basically. It it's it it forces or it it keeps water from getting sucked into your engine. You can submerge yes. your engine of your car. Yeah. And you have to suck air into your car. I mean and as long as you have all normal. the things yeah. sealed up. Yeah, right. As long all as they're the electronics not and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, right. if you're gonna get that wet, then yeah, you're we said cause snorkel and we said something else. What was the other one? Uh, Max tracks. I don't even know what that Rooftop is. Rooftop tent. What's a max tracks? Uh, recovery board. So it's a it's a board that's probably about 
three feet long and has little ridges on it. Usually okay. they're orange. Okay. Um, and you stick them under your tire when you get stuck to okay. get out. I use actually a product called Go Tread. Okay. And Go Tread is collapsible, but it does a lot of the same kind of recovery gear is what it is. Okay. Good to use in the snow. Oh yeah, yeah. Really? I helped okay. a guy get out of the snow uh, just this last winter for fifty bucks. No, no, <laughs> just nah. joking. I'm just joking. You're the nicest person I'll ever know. Yeah, yeah. I, don't. <laughs> you, I might tear someone's vehicle up, so I don't feel like I can charge them. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, we sometimes give away these bad boys, and sometimes we wait till the end of the show. I figure I'd go ahead and throw these your way. These are uh, kind of fun. You can wear them if you want to. You can take them home if you want to. I'm a huge sunglasses guy. It, these will not keep the sun out. No, one they, bit. they won't. They no, won't. not yeah. at all. Yeah. But okay. Anyways, I can go find some, lenses for them. Some glasses for you. Okay. Perfect. I um, like it. Does it one match? Or, yeah, you look great. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one or two things that you think the viewers should know. We've touched on a lot. Uh, should know about me or Anything, the whatever the stuff? you want. Anything you want. Man, I know it's, um, it's pretty broad. You may box you in. Okay, here's this. I've done photography all my life. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell people, people will come up to me at the mall and go, I know you from somewhere. And I'll just tell them it's that Brad the Pitt. Snow. Yeah. No, I'll <laughs> yes. tell them it's the Brad Pitt thing that I got going on. Okay, what is that? You look like Brad Pitt. I look Pitt. like Brad Pitt. <laughs> I look like Mark Wahlberg sometimes. <laughs> you kind of, if I squint my eyes just right, I kind of could yeah. see it. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. 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 But now I tell them that because it's usually a long story about like, okay, what wedding were you at or okay. something like that. So I just make it funny and cause it happens quite a bit. And I was trying to figure it out. And I tell them, I end it with, well, Benjamin Buttons, I'm one of the characters in that movie. Like as he grew up and you know, went old to young. Yeah. And so much so that I my like that show. daughter's uh, daycare, the lady that was the gatekeeper, uh, actually knew my sister from high school. So she actually knew who I was, but mm -hmm. she started it off with, I know you from somewhere. And I said, Brad Pitt. And so for years, you know, dropping my daughter off. And then about five years after she had gone there, uh, I was at a restaurant and this lady couldn't remember my name. And she said, Brad, That's and I turned funny. around real fast. That's and funny. she was like, you turned around so fast. Yeah. I was like, well, it happens all the time. He just called and said, I'm sorry that my celebrity <laughs> yeah. has been such a pain in your normal life. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Way I mean, he's from clean. Oklahoma, so. Yeah. And it's not far away. Just like him. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, anything else? Yeah. Questions I think, for us? I think we hit it. Uh, how, how long have you been doing this? What? The, <laughs> like, the Behind what? the Unicorn. I think we're only, I think this might be episode 11 or so, right? How long have we been doing this it? This is 12. This is going to be episode okay. 12. Very good. 12 is a good number. Yeah. Terry episode Bradshaw. 12, we started out doing a podcast every week, and then we cut back to every two weeks because we were burning through our content. Yeah. And since we we're pretty new to doing this, um, but that's just kind of what we're going with. Yeah, and, I uh, totally get that. Since we interview people, like you do it weekly, we do it weekly, but we don't always have to interview somebody. There's sometimes that you it's just, just me and my buddy Lee, yeah, and we talk about what's going on currently in Overlanding yeah. or what things have aggravated us, yeah, um, stuff like that. So yeah, we just keep it going no matter if we have a guest or not. Yeah, but this would be harder to do just by yourself. <laughs> Well, I think Toon Jimmy's supposed to come and visit us sometime. Okay. My, my oh, yeah. Supposed to. Yeah, your cartoon Who guy? is he going to talk about, Ryan? Or do we wait? Uh, I think he wants to talk about his previous employment with Elon Musk. Yeah. Was, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk is a big topic right now. <laughs> yeah, so that should be a pretty entertaining yeah. one. Actually, that's a good, that's a really good thing to segue to because like in the overlanding world with EV vehicles, mm -hmm. Yep. That's come up quite a bit, and the distance isn't long enough yet, but okay. the Rivion just did the Trans-America Trail, okay. which goes from coast to coast, and part of it goes through Oklahoma, um, but he, I think, just completed it in a Rivion. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Have you driven any electrical vehicles? Um, no, but I rode in one of the Teslas. Yeah. You liked it? Fast. Oh, yeah. Super yeah. fast. Yeah. yeah, I didn't trust the person driving, so I was scared. Yeah. I uh, I got to move a Ford F one hundred and fifty Lightning. Oh, um, 
because we do some TV commercials and stuff for some dealerships. Yeah. And so we got to drive those sometimes and just moving around. It's kind of weird. You get in, you're like all fake noises, like the engine starts. Cause that's just like what we're conditioned to. Yeah. And which makes it feel better. But then like, you don't hear the engine really like it just says ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, the oh, lightning's like, yeah. pretty unique because uh, it's pretty cool. It has a, a motor in it that will kick on to help charge the battery system. Yeah. And so, and it, a lot of, it's they're, for they're, tailgating. they're talking yeah. about it for overlanding yeah. because even if it's parked and you've got things plugged into the battery supply mm-hmm. to charge your, your cooler or whatever it may yep. be, that motor may kick on um, at any time and just charge up the batteries. Yeah. I think that's, I, I've also not understood why they don't just hook on something on the wheels. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, the turbines, they spin. Yeah. Create on like, the wheels. Why aren't the, we doing the vehicle? this? Yeah. Well, it makes too much sense. I guess. Elon, come on. Yeah. Uh, we'll have them on the show next. Okay. Sounds good. Um, hit me with solar power because we were talking about that before recording or I can't remember, but um, I don't think it was while we were recording, but tell me about solar power. How does that relate to what you're doing? It seemed like you're the most primitive techie person I know. Solar, I'm not. You're not what? Solar? Primitive or te- Well, I'm primitive. I'm not techie as much. Okay. It's one of those things where you know more than you actually think you know. You're primitive most of the time. amenities. Okay, there you go. <laughs> primitive um, amenity driven. Solar is important because. Uh, you want your battery source, especially if you have an external battery um, or dual battery in your vehicle. So you've got the battery that starts your vehicle and you've got the battery that's supplying power to um, your fridge or your lighting system or whatever it is that you may have. There's a lot of people that do this and work. Um, It's their lifestyle. They Mm -hmm. live in their vehicles. Okay. Um, And so they do remote work and so they need to have power. And, uh, and solar just is an added thing to help keep those batteries topped off. Usually what you'll do is you'll have that battery, even if it's like a Jackery, a Goal Zero, which are companies that have those little portable generators, um, have a way to charge it through the alternator. Um, so you're, you're, as it's going, you're getting power, but if you stop for any length of time, then you just want those batteries topped off. Yeah. And Elon Musk, you know, Starlink is a big deal <laughs> in in yeah. the overlanding world with people that want to live this as a full time lifestyle. Okay. So they have internet, you know, in remote places. All right. Like the Ukraine. Well, this just in okay. from our, oh, our from, audience. Yeah, yeah, just from our audience. Very good. Um, how long do you usually go out and stay? See, that's a great question. I'm more of a weekend warrior most of the time. Okay. Most of the time it's leave. Thursday night, if I'm able to be off on Friday and then come back Sunday, um, which a lot of overlanding communities mm-hmm. say that you have to like spend like weeks and weeks and weeks to be an official overlander. I don't believe in all that. Um, but the term is is meant to be like sustained, like long lasting travel. Um, where it's multiple weeks or multiple months or years okay. even. There's a family that I know that uh, they've been doing this for seven years, okay. um, sold everything and have traveled all over the world. You know, it kind of reminds me of like tiny house, tiny living almost. Yeah. Except camping. Fair, more primitive than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think have- there's an evolution. It goes from hiking, mountain biking to car camping or to regular camping to car camping <laughs> living in your car yeah <laughs> to van life and then rv you know i think there's a progression of what the overlanders end up doing and a lot of people don't like the overlanding term because basically we are just car camping okay so then like uh, rock climbers like the ones that take their big jeeps out and stuff and go rock climbing yeah. and stuff like that totally different now we want to be able to get, bring our vehicles home. So rock crawlers okay. are going to trailer their vehicle there. Okay. And then trailer it back where we have to leave our home, go do all the adventure stuff that we want to seek yeah. out and then be able to also get back home. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's break, a big deal. Breaking axles. Yeah. Um, anything else? Dude, I think this has been fun. Awesome. I appreciate you coming. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, uh, tell your friends, tell your friends, friends. All the people. Yep. Uh, Thank you to uh, Design Tunnel. And thank you to Michael. Really appreciate you coming in. Good job. All right. Whatever you do, go all over. That's the way I end my shows. Oh, okay. There you go. Awesome. I love it.
Okay, go all over. <laughs> 